the same. Every mother crow thinks their baby's the blackest. And I have some pretty black kids. <laughs> I love them. Thank you. Thank you. So developing the theme for SFR is always difficult because the theme carries so much impact. Because this is our first global event, um, we were thinking of a theme like One Under the Sun to represent unity in California. But being so close to Disneyland, we knew that the theme had to be magical. When someone suggested one magical moment, I remember thinking, yes, that's it. It reminded me of a quote that I love. Life is about moments. Don't wait for them. Create them. When I think about those defining moments in my life, I don't always recognize them as magical at first. It can be days, months, even years before we realize how deeply a single moment impacted our lives. Like so many of you, I believe in the magic of Disney. Yes. <laughs> Disneyland fills me with childlike wonder. How could it not? It reminds me that if I'm pure of heart and wearing the right dress, birds and squirrels will fly through the windows and actually wash my dishes. But if not, I still have Scentsy Clean products with their own kind of magic. So for weeks, um, I've been thinking about magical moments and what I might share with you today. The more I thought about it, the more nervous I became. I guess I'm just always nervous, but if I'm being honest, it's a lot of pressure on coming up with a message that will meet your expectations. I really want this to be um, one amazing, magical moment. Every year, I get a little nervous because I love you um, and I want this to be special. So I started to, um, doing some research on the topic of magical moments and asking myself some questions. What is a magical moment? Can it be defined? We all know them. Oh, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> so it's dumb. <laughs> We all know them when we feel them, but is there something that we can do to have more of them? I didn't have to look very far for an example of someone who knew how to create magical moments. I only had to look directly across the street at the entire world created by Walt Disney. Walt Disney was dedicated to creating worlds of fantasy and fairy tales as a storyteller and movie maker. I read part of the book how to be like Walt, who was fascinated by the foreword that Art Linkletter, a radio and television personality, and also Walt's best friend. In 1954, Walt drove Art 25 miles right here to Orange County to show him where he was going to build his dream. Art said all he saw was a big field of dirt clods. Obviously, Walt saw something very different. He encouraged Art to invest in the land around here because he said within five years, the price of the land would skyrocket. Walt put all of his money into the park so he couldn't invest in the land for all the hotels, restaurants, and shopping centers that would support all of the families that would come to vacation here. He thought he was giving his best friend a great investment tip. Art declined, which he admits was a multi-million dollar error. <laughs> Very large. Art was later reported to say that each step that he took back to his car that day cost him a million dollars. And that was in 1954. More importantly, he missed an opportunity to participate in an adventure that now creates magical moments for millions of people around the world because he didn't see Walt's vision. The fact that nobody got what he was trying to accomplish didn't diminish Walt's desire or vision at all. He kept moving 
making his dream a reality and creating a legacy that has endured for decades. When, he, when we started Sensi, most of our friends didn't believe us either. Or we'll talk to an industry expert to get some advice, and he was so excited to share our vision um, with this experienced man, and Orville respected him so much. The expert listened, listened attentively, and he said, quote, Orville, that won't work. Candles are a dying industry, and meltables are the worst part of it. <laughs> but he didn't let that, we didn't let that deter us either. We had a vision just like Walt had a vision. And once you have a vision, for creating something magical, you can't let it go. I dug deeper and I found this story in the book, The Magic of Walt. Every Saturday, Walt took his young daughters to Griffith Park in Los Angeles to play. Walt would sit on a park bench and think. And here's an excerpt from the book. While Walt was sitting there, doing nothing, whiling away the hour with only peanuts to keep him company, his head, like a merry-go-round, the, the merry-go-round in front of him began to spin. There should be a place, he thought, a place where children and parents can have fun together. And in that moment, the dream for Disneyland was born. We know that dream has been fulfilled as we gather for SFR on land that was rejected by Art Link Letter, <laughs> and our families um, are filled with all the joy of Disneyland. For Disneyland, it all started on a bench. Mm -hmm. Superhero. <laughs> Sitting on a bench. I'm sorry. You can do it. It may not seem like a magical moment. <laughs> but Walt's time sitting there was exactly what he needed to be inspired to build Disneyland. A result that has created magic for millions of us. We know magical moments when we experience them, but what exactly makes them magical? How can we create them? Can a magical moment really be defined and manufactured? In my research to answer these questions, I came across a book, The Power of Moments, written by Chip and Dan Heath. And if you haven't read it, it's an amazing book. The book is about how to recognize and create defining moments, the moments that shape our lives. And they emphasize that we don't have to wait to make them happen. We can create them if we know how. The first thing we have to understand about defining or magical moments is what Nobel Prize winning psychologist Daniel Kahneman calls the peak end rule. According to the peak end rule, what stands out is the best or worst moment, called the peak, and the ending. So not the entire trip to Disney, but the best part and the ending. Not the whole Sensi party, but the best part and the ending, that's what will be remembered. When you have a Sensi party, the guests won't remember everything that happened, they will judge their enjoyment and willingness to attend another on the peak and on the end. To have a great party, you don't need perfection. You need a single magical moment and a great ending. Once you understand the power of the peak end rule, you can consciously plan to build peaks. Peaks are magical moments and they can be created. It just takes a little bit of thought and planning, perhaps while sitting on a bench like Walt Disney. There is an example of a business that has mastered the art of creating peaks right here in LA, the Magic Castle Hotel. It's the second highest rated hotel in LA, just above the Four Seasons Beverly Hills. 
Out of 2,900 TripAdvisor reviews, 93% of guests rated the hotel as excellent or very good. The hotel is nothing special to look at. The rooms are average, the pool is small, there are none of the amenities that you would find at the Four Seasons or the Ritz-Carlton. But the Magic Castle Hotel still found a way to stand out by creating magical moments. They have proven that you don't have to worry about every detail. It's okay if the, most of the um, experience is average or mediocre, as long as some of the moments are magical. The average will be forgotten. There's a bright red phone by the pool. Pick up the phone and you will hear, hello, Popsicle hotline. Your order, you order popsicles and they are delivered by white gloved butler on a silver tray directly to the pool. If you have dirty laundry, the hotel will wash it for you and deliver it back at the end of the day wrapped in butcher paper and decorated with a sprig of lavender. There's a snack menu, movies and games all available, including the laundry service, all free of charge. They proved it was more important to spend money on popsicles and white gloved butlers than fancy decor and lavish amenities. The Magic Castle Hotel creates peaks by elevating the guest experience with unexpected things. The lesson here is that we don't need to impress everyone on every detail, which means creating magical moments is doable. According to the Heath, moments of elevation are experiences that rise above the everyday, that make us feel engaged, joyful, amazed, and motivated. They are peaks. I've had many magical moments lately that touch my heart and motivate me to create them for others. <coughs> I've watched some of you um, have some of those experiences too, thanks to Facebook and Instagram. Just this week, just a few days ago actually, um, consultant Candy Hine posted about a magical moment that she is creating for her family right here in Anaheim this week. This is what she said. Best day ever. I picked Owen up from deployment today. Me and the kids are about to get on an airplane on our way to Disneyland. And we get a cockpit tour when we get on. And tomorrow, Daddy will surprise the kids at Disney. Woo! is always a special time um, because of the little extra planning and thoughtfulness this return will be remembered forever because it is unexpected and because it's at <coughs> Disneyland it will carry special meaning <laughs> I got to experience a very sweet moment um, this week with a simple message from consultant Kelly Tenney those messages from her too. Woo, yeah. To think that in the midst of getting um, yourselves ready for SFR, which I know is a huge undertaking, Kelly and others are taking the time to think of me. It didn't cost Kelly anything but a few minutes of her time to make me feel special. How easy would it be for you to do the same? A simple text, phone call or private message goes a long way in creating special moments for others. Many of you think messaging your customers is bothering them, but a personal message properly delivered can create a special, magical moment for them. A few weeks earlier, or a few weeks ago, 
Consultant Heather Gorsuch made a sweet Facebook post for my birthday. And I, I don't like to draw attention to myself, but the post really isn't about me. It's about moments. Heather said this, thank you for believing in us. Thank you for sacrificing time with your family and loved ones, just for us. There are so many moments that you may have missed, and I know I wouldn't have traded it for the world. Heather's post demonstrates one of the most powerful ways that we can create magical moments. Expressing gratitude elevates the moment for the recipient. And studies show that those who express gratitude are also happier. Martin Seligman, considered the father of positive psychology, suggests not just writing a gratitude letter, but making a gratitude visit. And this entails writing a letter of gratitude, and instead of sending it, you read it to the person who has affected your life, right there in front of them. Research shows that those who make gratitude visits were happier than their peers and that happiness lasts at least a month. Heather probably wasn't referring to any specific sacrifice, but there was one time that comes to mind. In May of 2016, um, we were scheduled to attend the Region 3 incentive trip in Singapore. My mom, Alice, was ill at the time and couldn't join us. Only after we had committed to go did I realize that I would miss my last Mother's Day with my mom. My Aunt Linda volunteered to stay with my mom. This is, this is my call with her on Mother's Day. We got to FaceTime. Um, but my Aunt Linda volunteered to stay with my mom so that I could make the trip. And the two of them got to spend time bonding um, and cementing their loving relationship, which was so important for them, and they both supported me in going. I have no regrets about going on that trip, because I knew I was making my mom proud. She was never more proud of me than when she saw me creating magical moments for you because that's what her example taught me to do. Two weeks after the trip, my mom passed away. Just as time, so well, it's okay, I'll be good. <laughs> Just as time with our parents is precious and limited, so is our time with our children. We only have 18 summers with our kids before they go off on their own adventures. This autumn, sorry. <laughs> we get to say goodbye once again as Owen leaves to attend college. Last month, um, Orville and Grace were in the mountains for a youth conference. And Owen and I were home alone but this day, instead of spending time with friends, Owen chose to create a magical moment for me. Anyone who knows Owen knows he loves photography. I've heard him recount adventures with friends, hiking the foothills around Boise, and taking pictures. As he mentioned earlier, this day he invited me to go along with him. We got in his Land Cruiser, and um, he had just had the top removed, and it was the first time driving with the top off. You can tell he was really excited. <laughs> <laughs> we pulled up to a stoplight as we we're driving down the road, and a trucker looks in, and he goes, nice car, man. <laughs> We drove to Table Rock, which is a popular trail that climbs 900 feet in elevation in just a mile and a half. We had to hurry to make the sunset, 
the time I reached the top, and a few times as we were going up, I'm like, wait, we have to stop and take a picture. And I was really just resting because I was so hot. <laughs> We reached, um, we watched the sunset, we took some pictures, we explored the graffiti caves, and we waited for the famous Table Rock Cross to light up. We then hurried back down the hill to make it to our favorite drive-in, Fancy Freeze, right before it closed. Woo, yeah, it's really good. If you guys come to Boise, you should go there. <laughs> As we sat in the Land Cruiser, eating our greasy food and yummy milkshakes, I knew this would be a day I would not forget. Owen chose to spend this time with me instead of his friends. And I love his thoughtfulness. This created a magical moment for me as a result. <laughs> the evening was full of sights and sounds and yummy food. It was a perfect date with a son. <laughs> One very magical moment. Sights, sounds, smells, taste, heightening sensory experiences. That's another key to creating magical moments. It's why we elevate special experiences with food, like wedding cake. It's why we remember concerts, fireworks displays, or our very first Scentsy fragrance. Perhaps the most touching um, example of magical moments is illustrated in the moment. In this story, from the family, of consultants Matt and Jacqueline Roy. Earlier this year, um, Matt's dad discovered he had a matter of months to live. Matt's sister Megan was 24 and unmarried, and she realized that her dad wouldn't be alive to walk her down the aisle. So the family created a magical moment for a loving father and daughter. Here is Megan's post uh, um, that was on Facebook. One of the biggest moments between a father and a daughter is walking down the aisle for dad to give his little girl away as a bride. I knew with the diagnosis given, leaving him with only months left on the earth, this moment would probably not happen for us. So without a husband, my family helped me create a pre-wedding for dad to be able to give me away. We had a first look, father-daughter dance, and created what is now the sweetest memory and day of my life. Little did I know the day my dad gave me away would be exactly a month to the day that we gave him to the Lord. I'm so thankful for his life and the man that he was. I will hold this video close, not only for my real wedding day, but when I need to see that sweet smile and I wish I could hug his neck. This is my encouragement that you would live life with all the love in your heart and take every chance and opportunity that you're given. Dance with your daddy and never let a day go by to let him know that he is loved. Praising God for 24 years I got to spend with him and all the life and memories we shared. This is just my favorite. As sad and painful as the loss of her dad is, Megan created a special moment for him and for herself. In all of these stories, somebody made a decision to create a magical moment for others by elevating what could have been forgettable, a forgettable day into something special. And you can do the same. Think of how magical Sensi could be if we all focused on creating more and higher peaks for each other. So many of you have pro proven an, ab an ability to create magical moments, but at the same time, 
Others seem to have forgotten what they once knew. When you feel inclined to complain or feel discouraged, or just need to find a spark of inspiration for a, sorry, a spark of inspiration, look for a bench like Walt. Think of all of the people in your life who need a magical moment. Don't forget, they could be perfect strangers. There was a time not too long ago when our family was in desperate need. Of a magical moment. And found it on a bench. This is what I consider the most magical moment at Sensi. If you've read our story, you know that Kara Egan and Colette Gunnell started Sensi in the autumn of 2003, while Orville and I were on the verge of financial ruin. Our lives came together on March 13, 2004, on a bench. Orville recalls being so tired. He had 13 booths at the home show in Salt Lake City. One of the booths was given to him by the show promoter when someone didn't show up. The only thing that he could put in the free booth was some leftover video game devices that he had in the back of his truck. His teenage niece, Margo, was the only person he could get to watch the booth. <laughs> on a busy Saturday, after checking on Margo, he sat down on a bench at the end of a row, facing both his very slow video game booth and a very busy booth across that smelled really good. <laughs> that day, at that moment, on that bench, Colette was tired too. Monday night, I asked Colette to share her remembrance of that bench meeting. And here's part of what Colette shared with me. That day, I decided to take a quick break to eat lunch. I sat down on the bench at the end of our aisle and was eating really quick. It just so happened that at that time, Orville stopped by to check on the game controller booth. And after he happened to sit on the other end of the same bench I was eating at, we struck up a conversation and I asked about the game controller. In the back of my mind, I was really hoping that he would be willing to trade a game controller for a warmer, because I really wanted one. But I didn't really have the money to buy one, because I knew we were in lots of debt with starting Cincy. I was thinking, how can I get him interested in a warmer enough to make a trade? So I asked if he was married. <laughs> And he said yes. I was so excited and told him, you need to take one of these warmers home to your wife. He asked me to tell him about the warmers and I really shared my enthusiasm about how great they were. I asked if he would like to trade a warmer for a game controller and he said we could work that out. <laughs> then I started back to work at the booth and um, he went back and sat on the bench. I looked over and noticed that the wheels were seriously turning in his head. A little while later, he walked back over and asked us if we would ever be interested in selling Sensi. We explained that we knew it was a good idea and that we were a brand new company and that we were just trying to figure out how to market it. He had some ideas on how to help us take it to the next level. We were so excited. You asked me to share my thoughts about when we met that day. Well, honestly, I know without a doubt that it was meant to be. I think of that day and the chances of sitting on the same bench for a quick moment and the consequences that came after or from that brief encounter, I am forever grateful that Heavenly Father allowed our paths to cross that day.
expected. <laughs> Families, 
your teams, and your customers. Let's make this world of Sensi one magical place. Thank you. creating amazing experiences for families. And I know our family has enjoyed our incentive trips to Walt Disney World. 